we build houses, but is our habitat jeopardized? We build companies, but is our conscience compromised? We chase our dreams, but at what cost? Will we realize our folly when all is lost? Is there a way to undo our wrongs and prosper taking nature along? Is there a way to end nature's agony? Can we create a world of harmony? Industry is often blamed for doing damage to the environment. Industry exists for supplying products and services to the consumers. Consumers, in a very true sense, go for their aspirations and needs because that's what development is all about. So we are into a very strange trap where we start pausing at somewhere in the cycle and say, this is the villain. I think the villain is not aspirations, villain is not consumerism, villain is not industrialization. Villain lies in us being a little insensitive and less careful about ensuring that we grow with minimum damage to the environment. The onus for protecting the environment lies with each one of us and it's time to pause and ask ourselves how we can make a difference. Can we do something in our own ways which contributes to a bigger cause, which affects each one of us, which really answers a big agenda that is staring at us every single day? We as a company, we as a Cummins entity, can we do something which really would make a difference in the lives of people around us? And here we said, hey, let's pick up an agenda which is within our reach, which is about being absolutely, absolutely glued to the environment and making a difference out there. The right questions brought out the right answers. And the result is the Cummins Generator Technologies Manufacturing Plant at Ranjangao, Pune. India's first green manufacturing facility with zero environmental impact. Our vision statement is making people's lives better by unleashing the power of Cummins. Everything that we do leads to a cleaner, healthier and safer environment. Not only in terms of our products and services, but also in terms of facilities uh, you know, we made sure that this is a cleaner, healthier and safer environment. But the road less travelled has its own challenges. Let's go back to where it all began. This concept of green which was taking shape in our minds, it looked initially whether it's going to conflict with the corporate objectives, stated corporate objectives. We were not very clear actually what is that we need to really do probably we will be incurring a lot of cost. We had heard about green homes, green offices, green commercial complexes. We hadn't really heard about a green factory. Every great journey begins with the first small step. And here, it meant understanding what the green factory concept was all about. I was wondering how to get the information for implementing green building concept and we visited CII Hyderabad Greenhouse Centre for getting the information. From CII, it was from the specification point of view where LEED was the one is the certifying body and then ASHRAE the specification. So we looked at those specifications, we studied it and then we discussed our consultants, architects and we really found that we can definitely meet this and also in many cases to exceed this. So what exactly is a green factory? A green factory optimizes natural resources like light, wind and water. It minimizes the use of non-renewable energy sources. It utilizes eco-friendly materials. And it prevents contamination of the environment through waste management. After detailed research and understanding of the green factory concept, the team visited the plot for the proposed factory. And they were immediately confronted with the first challenge. When I really reached on the site, I had a big question mark and I said, oh God, what do I have in my hand? It had 20 meter gradient on one side and 10 meter gradient on another side. It had rocky mountains. There was a natural free flowing water body in the heart of the plot. It just didn't feel like the most friendly site that you'd like to set up a plant. But nature has its own methods of disguising opportunities as problems. All they need is unraveling. Nature has the provisions. We just need to understand and utilize them in a proper way. We utilized some of these very effectively to our purpose, which is what nature offers us. And sure enough, 
the slope gradient of the plot proved to be a boon. This is typical terrain which was helping us now to pump this water through the gravity. So we are not using any electrical pump for pumping the water and distributing everywhere. Also, the free-flowing Nala proved to be a useful resource for collecting water for industrial use. A water collection tank was constructed at the entry point of the Nala to collect rainwater. The water collected in the tank is used for various purposes and the overflow is allowed to flow on the ground surface. This enables percolation of water through bores, which have been intermittently drilled along the flow path. As a result, the subsoil of the surrounding areas gets enriched. Buoyed by these initial successes, the team started on the construction with full gusto. A truly green factory blends into the landscape without altering it significantly. So it was ensured that excavation at the site was kept to the bare minimum. Cliffs formed as a result now serve as a wall along the periphery of the premise. Moreover, 75% of the excavated materials were reused for construction. The stones on the boulders which came out, we had them locally broken and accordingly used into the plinth of the building. As construction progressed, the team carried forward the green credo by choosing recycled and eco-friendly materials at every juncture. The bricks that we have used for the superstructure are fly ash bricks. The fly ash is a very harmful, hazardous byproduct which has been productively used. The cement is basically a slag cement. Slag is a waste again. So that's been recycled into the cement. The entire factory complex comprising of the production facility, office area and canteen has been developed without using wood. Only recycled materials have been used for ceilings, carpets and other interior designing requirements. An eco-friendly material like glass wool has been used for cladding the roof and low VOC paints have been used for all painting requirements. As the green concept became clearer, the team decided to further capitalize on nature's many facets. The first priority was to minimize power consumption from cooling and ventilation. The area where our factory is located happens to be a very windy area. Rather than just ignoring it, we said if this pressure is available, if this wind velocity is available, can we utilize it for our own productive use? The team developed and implemented the concept of a natural wind tower. This is a 10-story high tower which captures air at a height of around 30 meters and channelizes the same through underground ducts into the production facility. Net effect is that today we are able to get a circulation in our shop floor which is five turns per hour, cool air, circulating air, fresh air, completely ventilating and cooling our workplace. Lighting is another major contributor to power consumption. And here too, nature's provisions were tapped effectively. We realized we were in an area where there was a lot of sun and, and opportunity. I said, can we use this? The building design has been made in a manner to get maximum natural light into the interiors. Sunlight enters the work area from the ceiling and from the sides. As a result, not even a single artificial light is used during the daytime. Also, the right kind of glass was used so that only light enters the premises while the accompanying heat is restricted. Power consumption was further lowered by opting for suitable equipment and processes manufacturing process while design stage what we said actually we will use the equipments which are having energy efficient electrical systems so that we require lesser power. We've also installed light fittings for the dark hours which are energy efficient and which ensure a good lux level with lesser power consumption. The processes that we have looked at are energy efficient. We have put new technology equipment so that the hazardous waste has been drastically reduced to the tune of 70% with respect to the conventional system. Industrial waste can be a major pollutant. For a factory to be truly green, waste management is a critical criterion. My factory is a zero discharge factory. It means it doesn't discharge anything. Whatever it does, it treats it and does it. We have industrial waste created due to production. We have domestic waste. 
and we have waste generated out of the canteens. All these three wastes have been cultured through vermi composting and then that same vermi composting is used as a fertilizer. Even the hazardous waste which is going to be generated during the production has been referred to and is going to be picked up by the government approved agencies. Further on, water which is a very major component of any discharge. We have treated this water and are utilizing the entire treated water for our own landscape and a provision has been kept to recycle and to use this water for flushing if the need arises. A truly green setup also means compensating for the carbon dioxide emissions arising from manufacturing and even transport of employees. We are offsetting the CO2 that has been emitted actually by, by us. Almost 2,000 trees have been already planted. This not only helps in the compensation part of it, but also helps in prevention of soil erosion. One of the commons objective is to reduce uh, greenhouse gases by 25% in the next three years. I think from that point of view, we are very well placed. Going green goes beyond processes and practices. It is a mindset change a culture change, which becomes a way of life. One of the many such practices is washing one's own dishes, no matter what level one works at. What is the purpose of washing the dishes? When you start washing your dishes, you start throwing what you've wasted. So when you every day you take out that food and put it somewhere else, you realize, hey, I've wasted. So by doing this, we're making people sensitive. Hey, you shouldn't be wasting food. And what's nice, these habits, you switch off lights when you leave the room, you don't waste your food when you're eating. You, you do these things, people carry that home. I definitely want to take my family and show them what is the, the thing and why we are saying, okay, this is how it is going to help the environment. With that, definitely even do, they will also communicate it to the outside people. It's totally eco-friendly, so it makes me really feel great about it. It is a matter of pride for me. A matter of pride to work with a company like this. We are actually walking the talk and making an example for this whole environment. Green culture which is set in uh, at uh, Cummins Generators is going to help the community to develop in a better way because every employee then carries back home this message and probably becomes a better citizen. The green mindset has even crossed the company boundaries and affected other stakeholders like customers and suppliers. When my vendor comes here, when my customer comes here and he sees a building management system, he sees us utilizing rainwater harvesting, it just hits him. These guys are smart guys, they're utilizing nature to the best advantage. Why can't I do it? I was really bowled over by some of the technologies which they had used and embedded in the design and construction of this plant. I would say that it spurs one on to maybe emulate them and say, if they've done it, we can do it also. an example which has been set by Cummins Generators and a lot more industry is need to uh, probably follow. So I think this is going to set a new benchmark within the Cummins family and hopefully a benchmark within uh, the industry. The cynical mind might still insinuate that a green initiative adds to costs and does not provide tangible benefits. This myth has been conclusively proven wrong at the Cummins Generator Technologies factory there are some very quantifiable benefits that we have experienced in this project. It is not esoteric, it is not even philosophical, it is down to the bottom line, you can see it in the PNL, you can see it in our Excel sheets. Take up the natural lighting. In our shop floor, we have zero lighting. That's 25 to 40 percent, depending on the reduction in energy consumption. It didn't cost us extra. We had to put a roof, we put the right type of roof. We had to put the windows, we put the right type of glazing in windows. So maybe its payback is almost immediate. Natural wind ventilation system that exists in our factory is one where we have initially made an investment. After that, we have zero expense, zero expense for fan ventilation cooling in my whole factory. 50,000 square feet of factory space has no fans. 50,000 square feet of my factory has flow of air, cool air, seven degrees centigrade lower than outside saved me 30% cost of electricity. We recover the cost of the entire system in, in between 12 to 18 months. Let's look at other small little things. We have utilized recyclable materials. So my cost of capital, my cost of initial investment has gone down. 
We are using solar for heating water in our canteen. We had a terrain where there was a water flow. We have tapped that water into a rainwater harvesting. So we are utilizing water which we would have otherwise had to purchase from outside. Within two to three years, we'll be using zero water from outside. So I'm going to save 1% of the cost. So if I were to aggregate, the entire payback period would not be more than six to eight months. So it flows to the bottom line in the next, next annual report. Everybody else thinks that you are a martyr, that you've gone ahead and made an investment in green and you've been very, very nice to the society, which we have been. But within this martyrdom, perceived martyrdom, there's a heroism, a heroism where you are making money for your business. The Cummins Generator Technologies Factory at Ranjangao is a world-class facility, but it stands for something far greater. It stands testimony to the fact that nature and business can coexist and prosper in complete harmony. There is implicit in minds of a lot of people that green environment is something very complex something very advanced. The truth is that each one of us in our own domain, each one of us in our circle of influence can be green. It doesn't require A, too much money. It doesn't require too much technology. It does not require huge amount of resources. It requires a heart. Da da